Alexa Poulter and I'll be telling you the story of a trickster. Do you know what a trickster is? It's an animal or a person that likes to play pranks on other creatures in order to get them in trouble or make them do silly things to themselves. Native Americans have been telling these stories for hundreds of years, but today I'll be telling you the story of Giddy Up Wolfie. But before I can begin, I'm going to need your help. You see, our main character, Rabbit, has a little song that he sings, and I need you to help him out. It goes, Oh, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, Wolfie, down to the path we go. Oh, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, Wolfie, down to the path we go. I say giddy up, you say yee-haw. Oh, giddy up, yee-haw. Let's try it out together. Oh, giddy up, yee-haw. Oh, giddy up, yee-haw. Now sit back and let me unfold this marvelous tale. Once, a long time ago, when people were few and animals sprawled across the land, there lived a trickster known as Rabbit. Now, in this particular tale, this is where Rabbit falls in love. But as the trickster that he is, he can't just fall in love with any ordinary girl. No, no, no. Rabbit fell in love with the beautiful she-wolf. He would peek behind the rocks and watch her as she would race after a deer. Oh, she's as beautiful as a swan. He would watch from inside bushes just to see her as she would walk past him to sit on her rock. Oh, her fur is as white as moonlight and her eyes as blue as the sky. If only she'd be mine. Now the she-wolf happened to have her eye out for Rabbit as well, but uh, for much different reasons. Hmm. What a delectably tasty rabbit. I'd like to have him for supper. And so that day, the she-wolf went up to Rabbit and invited him to dinner. He was so excited that he spent the rest of the day washing his fur until it shone, brushing and smoothing out his fur and rolling around in the meadow until he smelled as sweet as the flowers. And as soon as the sun began to set, he was ready for his date. As he hopped up to her cave, he knocked upon the rocks. And she greeted him. Why, hello there, scrumptious. Why don't you come in? He walked inside and just as she was about to get her claws around him, he quickly turned around and said, Miss She-Wolf, I was going to wait till after dinner, but I can't. You are the most beautiful creature that's ever lived. Will you be my bride? The She-Wolf did not know what to say. What? Marry a rabbit? No, that's silly. Besides, I have a greater love. Who's that? asked Rabbit. <sighs> Wolfie. His fur is as black as night, and he's as fast as the eagles, and he will be my husband. As Rabbit thought to himself, he got himself an idea. <clears throat> that old flea bag? Let me tell you something. He may act all big and tough around you, but when you're not around, he does whatever I say. In fact, I can ride on his back like a horse and sing a little song. Oh, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, Wolfie, down to the path we go. Oh, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, Wolfie, down to the path we go. Oh, giddy up, yee-haw. Oh, giddy up, yee-haw. The she-wolf did not know what to say. N no, that, that, that's impossible. Well, how do you know, asked Rabbit. <gasps> the she-wolf looked at Rabbit and said, If what you say is true, that must make you the cleverest animal of them all. And, well, you're kind of cute. Okay, if you can prove that what you say is the truth, I will get rid of Wolfie and make you my husband. If only he was here. Oh, that's him now. Rabbit? But Rabbit was long gone. Soon Wolfie came striding in. I just
just saw run out the cave. The she-wolf ran up to him and said, Oh, Wolfie, you'll never believe what that rabbit has said now. He said that when I am not around, you do whatever he says, and that he can ride on you like a horse. What? No, that is not true. I would never put myself so low as to let a rabbit do that to me. Well, how do I know? Oh, I could never look at you thinking that that could be true. Wolfie growled and said, No, I will go get Rabbit myself and make him tell you the truth. And with that, he set out. For two days, he searched the earth for his footprints. He sniffed the air for his scent and asked any animal he came across if they knew where he was. And after the third day he began to rise, he found Rabbit on the ground with a very long thorn in his foot. Wolfie came slowly forward. Hello, Rabbit. Hello, Mr. Wolfie. Lovely day, isn't it? I've heard you've been saying some bad stuff about me to my girl, right? Who? Me? That's preposterous. I would never do that. Listen up, Rabbit, and listen good. If you don't come with me and tell her the truth, I'm going to make rabbit stew out of you. Very well. I'll give up my love for the beautiful she-wolf, but I seem to have stepped on this nasty thorn. And my fur hurts so much, I can't walk. Please give me just three days to heal it. But Wolfie had been traveling for so long and was so unretired and angry, he said, no, just climb on my back and I'll carry you there. But you're getting off as soon as we get there. Okay, said Rabbit. And as he climbed onto Wolfie's back, without him knowing, slipped that thorn out of his foot and stuck it into his bushy tail. And so they set off. They went through the forest, crossed a meadow, and over a river. And just as they were approaching the she-wolf's cave, Rabbit secretly took out that thorn and pricked Wolfie as hard as he could. I yeep! screamed Wolfie and jumped around trying to get that thorn out, but it was stuck in deep. The she-wolf came outside. She heard a strange noise. And what do you think she saw? None other than a rabbit riding Wolfie like a horse and singing, Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, Wolfie, down to the path we go. Oh, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, Wolfie, down to the path we go. Oh, giddy up, yee-haw. Oh, giddy up, yee-haw. And for the first time in that she wolf's life, she looked at Robin and fell madly in love. Oh, look at how majestically he rides that silly Wolfie like a mighty warrior.